Hi, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to open up, disconnect, and remove a Music and Sound or MS Systems model DMC 3 4. Now, you might be wondering, why is this guy doing a video on an MS DMC 3 4? It's on a Newtone channel. He's got hundreds of videos about Newtone intercom systems. Why is he making this one? Well, if you wonder that, what you need to do is go to the very first video in this playlist and watch that video and that will explain why. So let's get on with removing our DMC 3-4. We start disconnecting things. Let's talk about the DMC 3-4 a little bit because it is somewhat of an unusual model and it can make removing it from where it's installed a little more complicated in some cases than a standard DMC-1 is. So the DMC 3-4, you might have never thought about the reason. Why is it a 3-4? The DMC 3-4 was m and Systems, or Music and Sound as I prefer to call them. It was their sort of universal replacement model for older 3-wire systems and older 4-wire systems. Music and Sound had always made 4-wire systems, and Newtone had always made primarily three-wire systems. When the DMC 3-4 was designed, they designed into it the ability to work on either four-conductor four, four conductor wire or three-conductor wire. It did require the use of different remote speakers. There are three-wire speakers and four-wire speakers, but the master station is adjustable by moving a connection on one of the circuit boards, so it will work with either three-conductor or four-conductor cable. Now, these three and four conductor cables, it was required that they be flat parallel cable, not twisted pair cable, not phone wire, but actual flat parallel cable. Flat parallel cable means there are four wires in the cable and they're all bonded together side by side. So in a, in a music and sound four wire system, your wire colors would be red, black, green, and white. And in a new tone system, you would have red, center, and blue. So it will work in any of those. So since this is a replacement model, what you're going to find when you open up may vary slightly in colors as what I show in this video, but for connections and if you, when you disconnect, if you follow the advice I give you, you will be able to put it back together later on after it's been repaired and you shouldn't have any problems. So you'll have to pay attention to this. It may be on the final at the end of the video. The very first thing you have to do before you start do, disconnecting anything on an M&S DMC 3-4 is you must turn the power off to the system. This one is already powered powered off and you can tell because the display is blank there's no backlight on the display and the clock is not lit up. We'll get more into the details of why this is necessary but it is important to do. If you don't do it you're going to cause yourself grief later on and possibly end up costing yourself more money. So you must turn the circuit breaker off. So to remove the master station there are two panels at either end. The panel on the left is a door that opens up and it has the room control switches behind it and there's one faceplate mounting screw in the center here and then this is the speaker panel on the right and this comes off the set sometimes these are a little tricky but if you wedge it and wiggle it back and forth you'll be able to pop it off and put it aside carefully now you're going to need a few tools to remove a dmc 3-4 you're going to need a standard phillips screwdriver you're going to need a small flat screwdriver. This is a two and a half millimeter, which is the perfect size. Anything bigger than this probably won't fit. Anything a little smaller probably will be okay. You're also going to need a Sharpie. You're going to need some blue masking tape. You're going to need a pencil. Yellow is my favorite. And you're also going to need to have your phone. So let's talk about the phone for a second and then I'll show you how to utilize this great technology we have as you go along. If you're removing a master station because you're going to send it off to have it repaired, best case scenario is with shipping time and repair time, it's going to be gone about two weeks altogether. And if you haven't installed a lot of intercom systems before, you would be surprised how much you will forget 
after two weeks has gone by after you have uninstalled this. So the phone is a valuable tool because it has a camera built into it and you can take pictures of things before you disconnect them or as you disconnect them as a reminder of how things went together. So it's a valuable tool and I recommend it highly. Let's go ahead and open up our DMC 3-4. We're gonna remove the faceplate screws. The screws are reasonably long. They're about two and a half inches long. So as you unscrew them, you'll be thinking, gosh, is this ever gonna end? You know, we all complain about they don't make the screws long enough and then they make the screws long and we complain about that too. So I guess we can't win no matter what. Now, one of the things you have to realize that you can kind of see here is when you remove the faceplate screws, the DMC 3-4, it's not physically attached to the wall housing any longer. There are no hinges, there are no brackets, there are no clips that hold it in place. It's really only the screws and a little bit of gravity. So when you take the last screw out, you need to make sure that you're supporting it in some way so it doesn't actually flop out of the wall and jerk on all the wires and create a problem. Once you have the screws out, all you have to do is carefully slide it forward and tilt it down so you can see the back. And the first thing you want to do is you want to look for this green support strap right here. In the center of the wall housing right here is a metal hook and you hook the green support strap through the hook and that will allow the master station to be supported against the wall. Now, if you have a nicely finished wall and it's painted really nice or you have some kind of faux finish or you're very meticulous about the way your house looks or you have wallpaper perhaps, what you'll want to do is use a rag and you can put the rag between the bottom edge of the face plate against the wall so as you work on this and it kind of scoots back and forth, it doesn't make marks on your paint. In this particular installation, this customer has a very nice high quality plywood on the wall, so we're not too worried about scratching it up, so we're gonna forego the cloth. Before we start disconnecting things, let's do a brief overview of what's on the back of your DMC 3-4, so you'll be a little bit familiar with what's on here. Right here in the right-hand edge, this rectangular, this is the piece, this is the magnet on the back of the built-in speaker. Right here on the very back of the unit is the AM FM tuner module and on the end of the tuner module is an antenna adapter board which we'll talk about in a little bit. Over here more on the left are some electronic components and right here these multicolored wires we have black, white, orange and red. They are connected to a socket right here and these are the wires that come from the built-in chime module and down here on this end are the terminal board connections for the wires that come from all of the remote stations. Here inside the wall housing in the back right hand corner this is the chime module. This is the circuit board that creates the doorbell sounds for your intercom system. Down here in the bottom of the wall housing is the low voltage transformer that we talked about a little bit earlier. I think we talked about it. We're going to talk about it more in a second. And then you also have your antenna cable that comes out of the ceiling here. So let's talk about the low voltage transformer. And this has to do with why you have to power the system down, turn the circuit breaker off to shut the transformer off before you opened up the set. The transformer, the low voltage transformer in your DMC 3-4 is a special type of transformer and built inside the transformer. The transformer is mounted below this metal plate in a can that's down inside the wall. Built into the transformer are two internal fuses and those fuses are built into the transformer to protect it from being overloaded. So here we have the connections that connect the intercom to the transformer. This cable assembly right here with the two black wires, the two red wires, and the green wire, this comes from the back of the DMC 3-4. And at this end, these multicolored wires, yellow, green, brown, red, and blue, these are the wires that come from the transformer, and they're plugged together with this six-pin socket assembly. So the fuses in the transformer are small and they're fussy and finicky. And if sometimes what will happen is if the transformer was powered up and you go to unplug this, the shock of unplugging it can overload the fuses and cause them to blow. If the fuses in the transformers blow, the transformer goes dead. 
and the transformer no longer will be able to power your DMC3-4. Likewise, when it's time to reinstall your master station, if you plug these two plugs together while the transformer is powered up, the shock of plugging it back together will overload the transformers and blow the fuses. So you must turn off the circuit breaker when you disconnect or reconnect this because if you don't you run the risk of blowing the fuses. If you blow the fuses it can be repaired but that means that you have to take the transformer out of the can, you have to ship it off to someone like us so we can replace the fuses and then we send it back to you. So why have all of that hassle? Just turn the circuit breaker off. It's a good idea also that when you figure out which circuit breaker it is in your house put a little piece of tape on it that's where the blue tape comes in handy. Put a little piece of tape on the circuit breaker handle so you know later on, two weeks later when it's time to reinstall this, you remember which one it is so you don't have to hunt around for it again. Since we're talking about transformers, now is a good time to unplug this connection. So we know it's powered off and all you have to do is grab the two ends of the plug and pull it apart. This end with the five different colored wires, this stays in the wall housing. And this cable stays attached to the master station and we're just going to put it out of the way for right now so it's not blocking the view. The next thing we have to do is we have to disconnect the antenna which is connected to the end of the tuner assembly. The DMC3-4 is designed as a replacement unit for earlier models of intercom systems, whether it's music and sound or a new tone, most likely your installation will have some type of old school antenna instead of the antenna that came with the installation kit for the DMC3-4. In this particular case, there is a standard flat twin lead antenna cable that comes from a standard FM dipole antenna. This antenna lead is connected to two of the terminals on this little rectangular board here which is plugged into the AM FM tuner module. This is, an a, this is an antenna adapter board and it adapts the connections and the inputs from older antennas to be compatible with the more modern AM FM tuner assembly. So the flat twin lead wires are connected to these two screws and then on these other two screws there is this little piece of orange wire that's looped from one screw to the other and the reason this is done this way is a, a, a dipole antenna like this it, it's going to pick up both AM and FM signals and the FM signals are fed into these two connections but because of these other components that are on the antenna adapter board it's pulling off the AM signals and feeding that into the AM part of the tuner module and this orange jumper wire allows that feeding in to happen. The orange wi jumper wire does not have to be removed and your jumper wire may not be orange. It could be red, it could be black, it could be gray, it could be violet, it could be green. It doesn't make any difference what color it is. The radio signals don't care. What it cares about is that it's connected to these two terminals. So what we do need to do is disconnect the flat twin lead and all we're going to do is loosen the two screws and carefully take it off. And this goes in the wall housing. This is a good time to point out some optional things you can do that will make reinstallation easier. We've just disconnected the AM FM antenna wire. Now two weeks are going to go by and you're going to get your set back and you need to reinstall it and you might, I, I don't remember what this is, what's this wire for? I don't really recall. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our blue masking tape again and we're going to take a little piece of blue masking tape and we're going to wrap it around the antenna wire like this and we're going to use our Sharpie, Sharpie, and we're going to write on it antenna. We don't need to write AM antenna or FM antenna because it's the only antenna. So that's all you really need to know. Now, the other thing which you need to remember is where does it hook up? And you might, you might not consider the fact that you can go back and watch this video again and when I say disconnect the wires from here, you reconnect them. In case you don't think of that, this is also a good time to use your phone. Maybe before you disconnect the flat twin lead, you use your phone and you very carefully line up a picture of the antenna adapter and you take a picture of it. Now, if you take a lot of pictures of things as you disconnect all of this and two weeks have gone by, you'll think, well, I've got all kinds of pictures, but you scroll back through the pictures and you can't really remember why you took that picture. It's just a picture of some screws and I don't know what all that's about. That's where 
your yellow pencil comes into play. I've always found that it's very helpful if you take the yellow pencil and you point at what it is you're taking the picture of, in this case the screws for the FM antenna, and then with your camera you take a picture like that, and then when you go back and you look at the picture, you'll remember, oh yeah, that's where the antenna connects up because I was pointing to it with the yellow pencil. And that's why I like yellow, because it shows up really good. So that's just a little tip that might make your reinstallation easier later on. Here I showed you where the CHI module is. That's this board back in the right-hand corner of the wall housing. And off of the CHI module are these four colored wires. And the wires are white, orange, red, and black. And if you follow them from the CHI module to the back of the intercom, you'll see that they're plugged in right here. They're plugged into a little socket on the board, and that socket is labeled on the board as CHIME. And that's what ties the CHI module into the intercom system. This is another good opportunity to put a piece of tape on the wires and then use your sharpie and write chime on it so you'll remember what that's for but the other thing that you're going to need to remember is you're going to need to remember where it plugs in on the board and even though it says chime on the board you might not remember where that is so much so this is another good opportunity to take your pencil and you can point at the socket where it says chime and take a picture and then you remember what it's for once you've done all that you just pull it straight up and it unplugs and this goes back in the wall housing now this is the part where you have to pay attention up till now, everything's been pretty easy and everything's been pretty straightforward. But this is the part of the deinstallation that can be a little bit tricky because there are some variations on how this could be installed. So again, you have to remember a DMC 3-4 is designed to work on either flat parallel three conductor cable or flat parallel four conductor cable. And it could be music and sound cable, it could be new tone cable, it could be some other more generic -y kind of flat ribbon cable, it could be from an old Rittenhouse system, they use flat ribbon cable also, and their coloring is different than everybody else's. So there's a lot of variations on what kind of wire you may actually have and where those wires are connected. And this is the part that's important, so pay attention, because it will be on the final. So what we're looking at here is a close-up view of the terminal board connections on a DMC 3-4. And what you'll see if you look carefully is all, a lot of the wires, these are all the cables that come from all of the remote stations. And in this particular installation, there are four remote stations and there is one entry door station. A lot of the wires from the four inside remote stations, they're all bundled together and they're connected to big standoff screws on the board. So there's one standoff screw here and on the board underneath it it's labeled as white. There's another standoff screw here and on the board it's labeled as red. There's another standoff screw here and it's labeled as black. And then over here on the edge of the board is this long rectangular black connector and it has 10 different slots and each slot has its own individual wire connected into it. How does this work? Well, this type of design pairs up all of the same type of wire from each cable and then they're connected to their own standoff. So in a standard music and sound installation that uses four conductor cable, the colors on those cables are black, red, green, and white. And if you think about it for a second, here we have a black wire standoff. Here we have a red wire standoff. All of these wires on the black connector over here, down here it says green, and over here, this last big standoff, it says white. And those match the color codes that were on the older music and sound four wire systems. So the way it would be done if this had been wired with music and sound wire is all of the white wires would be bundled to connect together and connected to this screw. All of the red wires would be connected together and connected to this screw. All of the black wires would be connected together and connected to this screw. And then each individual green wire is connected to its own slot on the black connector. Now, you might be thinking at this point, well, that's not the color of wires that I see. I see these other color of wires. How does all of that work? Well, in this example installation, 
It's wired with Newtone 4 conductor wire. And Newtone 4 conductor wire, the outside jacket of the wire, you've got gray and you've got red and you've got blue and so forth. It's not the music and sound colors. It's a different kind of color. And I did this on purpose because it's a better example than the easy example, which would be music and sound colors. Now you're thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? I can't do this. I don't, I don't know what colors go where and how do I tell and all this other kind of stuff. Well, it's not really that hard because this is where, once again, your friend masking tape and Sharpie come into play. So what we're gonna do, and you have to be organized to do this, and it's not that hard. It's only a few connections to undo. Let's get to it. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do this one down here first. This is the big standoff where it says white on the board next to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the screw and we're gonna pull the bundle of wires out from underneath the screw like that. And we're gonna take a piece of blue masking tape and we're gonna wrap it around the bundle of wires and we're gonna mark it. Now, I'm going to put a W for white. If, you, if that's not enough for you, you can actually write white if you make your tape big enough. Now you know that this bundle of wires goes under the screw that says white. And again, in case you don't think you'll remember where that, wire, where that screw is or what that stands for, take your pencil, point to it where it says white on the board right here, take a picture of it, and then you'll remember because it says white and this says white and then you put the two pieces together and you'll figure it out. So we'll put that off to the side and get it out of the way. Now we're gonna do the next big standoff, which is this one. And we'll take those wires off. Now this is the red standoff. So we're gonna take another piece of tape and we're gonna put it around the wires like this. And guess what we're gonna write on that? We're gonna write red. Now we're gonna do this one. That's the black standoff. Take the wires out from under the screws. Take another piece of tape, wrap it around the bundle of wires. Take our Sharpie and we'll write black. And we've disconnected three quarters of our wires. So see, that wasn't really that hard at all. And you can kind of sort of tuck these away a little bit. Now, hidden underneath these, we're gonna, we're gonna jump ahead and then we're gonna come back. So underneath these are these two screws right here. And they're always kind of hidden by all the mess of wires that are over the top of them. These are the connections from the wires that come from the entry door speaker cones. They're not the doorbell wires, they're the communication wires to your door speakers. And it actually says on the circuit board, it says door, and then it says red and black. And surprisingly enough, the wires are actually red and black. Now, your installation, the wires may not be red and black. They might be two red wires. One of them has a white stripe. They could be two black wires. They could be black and green. They could be yellow and red. It doesn't really make any difference what the colors are as long as you know where to hook them back up. The thing I always tell people is the electrons don't care what color the wires are as long as they're hooked up in the right place. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, and again, you can take a picture of it with the pencil so you remember, you can loosen the screws. Take the wires out from under the screws and once again we'll put a piece of tape on it and we're going to write door so we remember and we'll put that back in the wall housing to get it out of the way also so now we're almost done the only thing we have left are the wires in the black block connector so let me show you how to do that because we have a trick for that this is where you need your little small two and a half millimeter or two millimeter flat screwdriver. Because inside these, this row of these little holes, there are little set screws. And the little set screws, when you tighten them down, they tighten a clamp down here where the wire is inserted into the slot in the connector. So you have to back the screws off so you can take the wires loose. And you need a small screwdriver. If you have a big ginormous screwdriver, it's not going to fit in the slot and then you can't loosen them up. So you need a small screwdriver. And the way I always do this, and I have done a lot of these, so this is a good way to do it, is again, you can always take a picture so you remember, but 
you're gonna have to do a little more than that to keep it organized. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the first set screw and you don't have to take it all the way out. You don't wanna do that because you don't wanna lose it. You just back it off two or three turns and that's fine. And then the little wire will easily come out of the connector. Now, in this installation, we have four remote stations. So we only have four green wires. Some installations you might have 10 or 12 or 13 wires. And it's a lot, a lot of wires. If you think you're going to put a piece of blue masking tape on every single little wire, then it's kind of a pain. So what I like to do, because I'm not really, when I do this in the field at someone's house, I don't mark things with tape and all of that because I know how things get hooked up. So I have an advantage. And the way I like to mark these is, we know this is room one because down here next to the slot where you took the wire out, it says RM1, which is room one. Then we have room two, three, four, and so forth. What I do is I take my Sharpie and I make one little hash mark on it like that. And that's number one. And then we put that off to the side and then we'll loosen the next set screw. And you really have to do these one at a time. You really can't do them all at one time because it'll become a jumble and then you'll lose track. We take out that one, we know that's number two, and then we make two hash marks. And the reason you use the Sharpie is once the Sharpie dries, it won't rub off. And you shouldn't be horsing around with the wires much anyway, so why would it run off? So we'll take this one, that's number three, and guess what we're gonna do on that one? We're gonna put three hash marks. So now we know what order they go in because it's important to reconnect them back in their original order because they match up with the order of speaker switches on the front of the unit and that's the order that you've been used to. So you want to put it back in the same way. So now we're down to the very last one. It would be number four. But I'm going to give you an example of what you do when you have a bigger system. If I just take this out and it's number four, I'm going to put four little hash marks on it. But what if I take it out and it's number nine? Nine's a lot of hash marks. So we're gonna pretend this is number nine and I'm gonna back off the screw and I'm gonna take the wire out. And remember, we're pretending this is number nine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I have to make nine hash marks. So the way I do it is I go one, two, three, four, five, because five is easy, everybody knows five. And then I give it a big space and then I do four. And that makes it a lot easier to quickly identify than if you make nine hash marks in a row. If it was 10, then it would be five and five. If it's 11, it's five, five, and one, and so forth. And if you space them out like that, it's easier to see. It's like when you count things and you make hash marks on a piece of paper and your marks are, you go one, two, three, four, and then five's a diagonal, and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and another diagonal is five. It's easy to count when you do it that way because you know it's grouped into fives, and that's the way we all think. You've got all of your wires disconnected, all you have to do is lift the unit up to support it a little bit, unhook the green support wire from the hook, and the unit is free from the wall installation. Once you have the DMC 3-4 removed from the wall installation, you can turn your circuit breaker back on so your kitchen plugs and things will work again, and then you can pack this up and send it off to have it repaired. Now, since it will be a couple weeks until you get it back, You'll need to just leave all of this as it is. It'll be fine. You can tuck the wires back in the walls. When it comes time to reinstall it, you can refer to the information that you made pictures of and the markings that you made. And you can also refer back to this video and use it to help you reinstall the master station. All you have to do is when I tell you to disconnect something in the video, then you simply reconnect it. As an example, we'll use the antenna. So here's our FM antenna, and we know that because we marked it as antenna. And we also know where it goes because remember, you took a picture of it and you pointed at the, at the antenna adapter board with the pencil, so you know where that goes. Oh yeah, that's where that goes. So when I tell you to disconnect this from the antenna adapter board, all you have to do is reconnect it. You just do it opposite of what I say. And then when you get done, you'll be all set and ready to go. Remember, when it's time to reinstall this, you have to turn the circuit breaker back off again because if you take this plug and you plug it into this plug while it's powered up, 
Most likely, you'll blow the fuses in the transformer and then you'll be sad and you'll have to take the transformer all apart and send it off to me to get it fixed and there's another two weeks of waiting So and more money. So don't do that. Turn the circuit breaker off. Remember, you put a, you put a piece of tape on the, on the breaker that's associated with this. So you just run over there and flip it off real quick and you'll be good to go. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps us. If you like our videos and like our channel, please subscribe. There'll be a banner right here. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we publish a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.